Here is an example of an equation that is quadratic in nature. We know this. We have a constant term. We have a variable expression, this x plus 7 to the 1 third. And we see the same thing over here, but with a double the power. So this is quadratic in nature. Now, this is not like the other examples that we've done where we could just factor it. It's a little bit more complicated than that. So what we're going to do is something that we do a lot of times in mathematics, and that's to do what's called a u substitution. And what we do is that we just create a different letter, a different variable or symbol to represent the complicated piece of the problem. So I'm going to let u equal x plus 7 to the 1 third. Now, if u is equal to that, that would then mean that u squared, remember when you square something, you double the power, so then u squared would be x plus 7 to the 2 thirds. And so this allows us to rewrite the problem into something that looks more like a normal looking quadratic. Because that means this guy right here just becomes u squared plus the 4 is still the 4, but instead of writing this expression, this is what our basic u equals. And then minus 45 equals u. And if I gave you this and I said, hey, can you solve this for u? It really shouldn't be a problem because we recognize that this is a trinomial, it's quadratic, and it's a guy that factors, right? So we can break down the u squared to be u times u. And the factors of 45 that are going to subtract to 4 are 9 and 5. So that's plus 9 and minus 5. And by using the zero factor theorem, we can say that u is equal to negative 9 or u equals positive 5. So notice I've done this entire problem, most of this problem, uh, in a different color. Because once I make this transition from this variable expression in terms of x, and I write that as a u, I want to make sure I understand that I'm in a completely different realm. And now I need to go back to the original guy. I need to go back to the original expression. And what does u represent? u was the placeholder for this guy right here. So now I'm going to replace this and say x plus 7 to the 1 third equals negative 9. And I'm going to solve that equation. Okay? I'm not solving for u. I'm solving for x because that was the original variable. And we just, we just saw something like this. When you've got a power that's a fraction, you can use the reciprocal power to undo this guy. So we're going to raise each side to the third power, like this. So we have x plus 7. When you cube negative 9, we end up with a negative 729. And it's just a small little step to finish getting x by itself. So x is equal to negative 736. That doesn't seem to be too bad. And we're going to repeat the same thing for the other half of this equation. So again, u is x plus 7 to the 1 third, and it equals 5. Now, I've had people ask me in the past, what happened to uh, the 2 thirds? Well, think about it like this. You had u squared here, but you broke up the u squared to be u times u. That's what happened to the two-thirds. You basically split this guy up to be x plus 7 to the one-third and x plus 7 to the one-third over here, which is why you see it being repeated in the two different parts of, uh, of, the, of this problem. So I finished this just like I did the first time by raising both sides to the third power. And again, I'm not just picking this out of thin air. It's because that's the reciprocal of one-third. So we are left with x plus 7. 5 to the third is 125. And finish solving for x by subtracting 7.
x is equal to 118. There you go. Hopefully not too bad. We've got one more example to do, which I think you're really going to like because it's got fractions.